sides. So in this case, we have a parallelogram, right? Or at least it shows we have two sides that are going to be parallel. All right, two sides that are parallel. And we have, you know, a four-sided figure, so it's a quadrilateral parallelogram. Um, now, so what we need to identify when we're trying to find the area, this is going to be the most important. You might even want to write this down so then when Dennis, you come and ask me what to do, you say, oh, okay, I remember the first thing you said was identify the parts of the parallel, uh, the parts of your figure, your um, parallelograms, uh, determine the parts of your figure. So, three. Um, Damon, what do you think this would be? We're, we've only talked about base and height, so what do you think three would represent? Base. The base, right? So I can just say three equals the base. And just label them, all right? Now here's where it gets a little confusing, where a lot of students make mistakes. So I gotta pick on somebody really, really special for this, and I'll pick on Philip. Philip, eight or ten, which one do you think represents the height? Eight. Sure? Yeah. Really sure? Yes. 100%. 120. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. If you're going to measure somebody, you measure them from the bottom to the top, right? If you're going to measure me with the stick, you're going to go straight up, right? Yes, you're going to go straight up. You're not going to measure me from over there up to here, right? That's not my measurement, is from over there to here. It's straight down to top. So your base is always going to be a direct vertical line. A lot of students will make a mistake and they'll say 10 is the height. Now, I'll show you in the harder problem when students will make a mistake. Usually for here, Alexander, you can see that 8 is the height. So we'll represent it there. And then we say area equals base times height. So area equals, um, can't take one through. Can't take one. Make sense? Yeah. Cool? Awesome.